r slash no sleep posted by you slash signed siled delivered i'm a psychologist and my strange walk-in client is back so he was back the mystery man slash creature who had popped into my clinic who needed help with working out his thoughts and confusion about humans and our right to live normal everyday therapy stuff like that he did come back i guess you guys were right there was no escaping him i packed up and left for home early having rescheduled my evening appointments i got home took a quick shower and got to making dinner i had olio olio that day and i made it super really intensely garlicky just in case you know right in the midst of twirling my pasta he showed up this time he didn't even bother to ring the doorbell one minute i was alone at my table trying to wind the pasta neatly onto my spoon next thing i knew i looked up and he was there right in front of me i swallowed the shock of seeing him there determined not to give him the satisfaction of seeing me scared my face hardening i looked him straight in the eye i told you i'm not free for an appointment today i told you you would be and you are he looked at my pasta mind if i grab myself a bite before i could reply he had strut into the kitchen no qualms at all he was soon back with a plate of his own olio olio from how he slurped it up i could tell that garlic definitely did not affect him that's a lot of garlic i guess you have a taste for intense flavors i looked at him defeated i guess you're not a vampire then his eyebrows rose then he frowned you humans you're so typical categorizing pigeonholing everything and everyone into those rigid limited boxes of yours you don't really have much imagination do you the comment hurt smarting i snapped back well you aren't the most open of people for someone who wants to know all about humans you sure aren't willing to reciprocate information about yourself i trailed off then added lamely and i didn't just consider vampires i thought about zombies too perhaps a shapeshifter or a demon he broke into hearty laughter yes yes i'm sure you did and zombies would be closer except i never died or became an undead and the fact that i obviously think i do eat the flesh of humans too not just the blood you know those vampires they waste way too much food i squirmed in my seat i'm none of what you've considered the universe has way more mysteries than what you're aware of young lady as i stayed resolutely silent he continued i will share some of who i am with you then i am not and never have been human this form i took it on as it suits me and it suits most people i try to keep a low profile hmm what else well my life is longer than the human life human lifespan is compared to mine remarkably short and fleeting i won't tell you the name of my people there's no way your human mind could comprehend the term much less speak it anyway staring at my quizzical expression he repeated slowly as if to a slow-winded child it's not in any tongue you can perceive or understand fine you want to know about how humans live what makes us worthwhile why our lives matter is that right he nodded then enlighten me what exactly is going to happen to me say i try to help you with this he shrugged nothing i'm not going to harm you if that's what you're worried about unless you try to harm me of course but then again maybe not even then i know you are unable to so i'd probably be more generous in my response seeing my frown he elaborated it's like when a little baby tries to hit you right it's kind of a i glared at him he cleared his throat well i just need your help and when i can better understand i'll leave i leant back in my seat letting out the breath i hadn't realized i was holding i will help you then if anything it'd be for the sake of your pitiful captives a touch of guilt lit his eyes for just an instant i carried on though i have to say it's not going to be easy unless you can really put yourself in a human's shoes see life from a human's eyes think as they do and love hate cry laugh as they do all i can really do is try to explain things for you to gain a superficial logical understanding of us it's like trying to describe color to a blind person who has never seen perhaps it can help you have an idea of it help you imagine it but it's not going to be anywhere as real and deep as if you actually lived it he studied my face thoughtfully he was silent for a very long minute then something flickered in his face a hint of excitement a tinge of delight you're right you're exactly right he stared at me eyes tingling with some sort of energy his expression was unreadable i started to feel a sense of dread and a sharp stab of fear 
I won't ask for your permission, since from what little I do know about you humans, I know that you aren't going to be okay with it. But I can promise you that whatever I'm going to be doing to you, it won't be that bad, it won't be permanent. Okay? At that point, I pushed back my chair, ready to make a run for it. He flitted from his seat, and was blocking my way in an instant. His eyes locked upon mine, and his gaze pierced my being. My muscles tensed and my body turned rigid. I couldn't move. My fear surged, but nothing came from me. I was unmoving, locked in place, flooded with intense fear, but with my body unable to react, unable to adjust to, or act on the fear. He pointed at me, and was still. Slowly, a trickle of something dark, black, viscous, started emerging from the tip of his nail. It was like black ooze was seeping from his finger, out of his body. The black, oily sludge began to coagulate, with each new drop that oozed out building upon the previous coagulation. Soon, the oozing black sludge had formed a long, thin spike attached to the tip of his finger. The tip of the spike was getting uncomfortably close to my face. I could feel the veins in my forehead throbbing, my eyes nearly popping with the pressure of the unreleased scream within me. He pulled his finger away, and detached the hardened spike from his fingernail. He pulled my left arm towards him, wrist facing up, and pressed the tip of the spike onto the skin of my forearm, denting my skin downwards. He pushed harder, and the spike broke through the tension of my skin. Blood bloomed from the open wound. He then dragged the spike downwards, splitting my skin in a long straight line, a rush of blood spurting forth from my gaping wound. He pulled the seams of my skin apart, widening the wound, fingers digging into the red and white flesh within. Then, he took the spike, held it horizontal to the open flesh, and pushed it in. The tears were pouring from my eyes, but still I could not scream. The pain was blinding. I watched in horror as my skin started to heal around the prong of black sludge. Soon, it was completely covered by my skin, a long thin bulge beneath. He grabbed my glass of water and poured it over my forearm, cleaning away the blood. I'm going to release you in a minute, but I don't want you to scream. Just know, what I've done to you, will not cause you any harm. I've just placed a bit of myself in you, a kind of connection, so that I can access your mind, your thoughts, feel how you feel, experience how you view the world. I promise you that I won't try to control you, I won't make you do or say anything you don't want to. I'm simply there to observe, to learn, to experience life as a human would. So please, don't try to remove this, it's not going to turn out well. And if you try, I will have to take over control of your body, to stop you. Understood? He looked at me searchingly. But all I could do was remain standing, frozen, as the tears continued to flow. I'm going to leave now, and you should be released in a short time. Please try not to scream then, you don't want to disturb the neighbors, do you? He pushed in his chair. Thank you for the meal. It wasn't too bad. Not nourishing at all, but it tasted fine. He paused, staring at me, and looked like he was going to say something else. He didn't, though, and left without another word. This time, he used my front door. I was rooted to the spot for a couple more minutes, before my muscles started to soften. I regained use of my fingertips first then my arms, and the moment I had full control over my body, I slumped to the floor, sobbing. That was a full day ago, but I still can't function. I cancelled all of my appointments, calling in sick for the next two days as well. The bulge is still there, beneath my skin. I can't bring myself to touch it, but I can't stop looking at it. It feels foreign, invasive, dirty. I feel deeply tainted. I feel nauseated when I think about that gunk in my body. I want to rip it out but I don't dare to. All I can hope is that his little experiment satisfies him soon, and he can come remove it. I really want to make him suffer, now.